My name is Asili Sanya. I work with Africa Rice as the program leader for rice sector development and also the third program project coordinator for the rice third rice compact, which we basically in layman's language we call it the rice value chain. But formally we call it third rice compact, supported by the African Development Bank. Um, that as it is about uh, technologies for African agricultural transformation, the last word transformation speaks for itself. It's about how can we grow businesses out of agriculture? How can we grow our farmers, our emerging entrepreneurs, our small SME seed enterprises, equipment fabricators, women rice processors, youths that are interested in agriculture, how can we be able to transform them into real businesses in agriculture? In that way, we will be able to address in a sustainable way the whole issue of food production. That has to be able to uh, phenomenally increase uh, product productivity, but productivity that is market-driven, um, and market-driven that will spawn enterprises. So this is basically it's about transforming the way we organize, the way we deliver, and the way we respond to market opportunities in agriculture. And for the rice value chain, we, will, we are uh, promoting market-driven technologies that have been independently uh, assessed by bank, African Development Bank hired consultants and they maintain a certain portfolio of uh, technologies including good varieties, processing um, technologies, processing and value addition, agronomy, etc. And we have to reach, and that is where the big challenge is, about around 2.8 million, close to 300 million beneficiaries in these three years for the rice value chain. And we must be able to bring down the, the, the difference which we are seeing, like in most countries, it's between 40, 40 to 60 percent of the importation bill in, in rice. We must be able to bring down this importation bill in the next uh, three years to at least another 30 percent or more. And we must be able to create jobs uh, through agriculture, through the rice value chain. Basically, the big chunk of the task is how do we reach 2.8 million beneficiaries out of which a couple of hundreds or thousands possible has to be entrepreneurs in the rice value chain. But as a matter of principle, all what they call regional member countries of the African Development Bank are direct beneficiaries. So we, have, we know that uh, that money, what we call centrally managed that, it's uh, seed money to catalyze uh, and mobilize bigger funds through loans to countries, through the African Development Bank, certainly, but the World Bank also as, as big players and even IFAD. So, what did, so we had to come up with a strategy whereby we say, which, which ones will we start up, say, in 2018? That's what we are here for. And then which, during that, even while that is happening, not to exclude any country, how can they immediately begin to benefit in terms of spin-off? So this is, so we start with nine countries. These are like Benin, Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire, Sierra Leone, uh, Uganda, Madagascar, Ghana, uh, etc., about nine of them. But these are start-up countries. But within the same year, 18 other countries will benefit. And they benefit through various ways. Some will be through seed. They have access to the seeds that will be produced for the good quality seed. Some will benefit directly through training in terms of working with our enabler, FARA, that is responsible of training. So we are, in, we are the whole 18 countries that have met the criteria we set for selection in the third project for rice are direct beneficiaries is the intensity 
of involvement at in our engagement at each point in time in a year that is making the difference so no, none of these countries are left behind but we have to have what we call corn about half of it 50 percent nine nine out of 18 is 50 percent we are reaching them with good technologies that are going to spill over and some are already spilling over to other countries and even within countries also so we will start with certain sites, we cannot be everywhere, and then how do we make sure that it spill over to other sites in other countries, in, 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 in the same country, and even outside the country. SADESI by the African Development Bank is a mixture of research and development. So the first two, two and a half years of SADESI was for Africa Rise, highly focused on the technologies we are promoting today. By the time we went into the second uh, half of SADC, what is called midterm review, we shifted gear and put emphasis on some of those technologies that really start to make difference in the hands of the, the beneficiaries. Quality seed, the, uh, the uh, gap, good agricultural practices, linking that with rice advice for fertilizer management, and then the processing and value addition, the gem rice pavola, the ashy treasure that we, we promoted, which is largely common in Senegal and Mali, but you go to other countries, you don't see it after years. So this is where now TAT has come to take these high performing technologies that have huge market potential in terms of a mi mixture of skills for jobs, for youths, uh, for the youth population, but also for private entrepreneurs who are like input dealers who can be able to use these technologies to provide services either in terms of um, um, threshing, some in, in, in some cases also, although that is not us, even land preparation, etc. So this is how that has been, and that's why we are lucky in Africa Rice. We started some of these things on the Sadesi in the last two years. Now we, through that, we are now linking and then trying to go to scale with this in the countries and the other countries that have not directly benefited from Sadesi. So it's like a continuum, then the scale is what is now different. Sadesi was more or less pilot type of things in terms of development to show that it worked. Now we start, how do we take it to real scale? And then using the core money, that is central management, and more importantly, country loans that they'll be taking, these type technologies will fit into that. And we have started that process with, for instance, uh, DR Congo through the African Development Bank, Central Africa Republic, Murutani, Gambia. So that is, this is the linkages to the bigger picture of transformation. And that's what we are always bringing in as Africa Rise to these country processes with the bank. The, the, the African Development Bank and indeed multilateral development, they are in, into infrastructure. We know that. They like to do infrastructure, they will they, they, to develop the country's infrastructure. They do research, but not the same level of intensity. So we had to, we as a whole group of TAT working with the bank, had to come and see to be able to attract the decision makers at the bank. How do we configure this in such a way that within the agricultural context, it looks like there is an infrastructure to scale out technologies in every country in Africa. That has been a first conceptual issue. And how we, we have been able to crack that by what they call, uh, we call uh, regional technology delivery infrastructure, R D uh, R T D I regional technologies. So when you go, you begin to see the partnerships, functional partnerships, not just you know any partnership, functional partnerships that have capability, the knowledge, the skills, the commitment, and the interest to take technologies to scales. So that has been the first thing to crack. And then from there, in, the, in our case, we came to, okay, this is the regional, I mean, at the Africa level, this is how they comes. How do we operationalize that at Africa Rise? Then we looked at Africa Rise's operational tools. 
how do we bring all these things together? The countries have decided this is our area we want to work. For rice, we want to develop it. Very important strategic positioning. So we pick that rice hubs of the countries because that has been picked by the countries. We have what Africa Rice has for years and learned with the countries how to run multidisciplinary rice research tax forces, Africa-wide tax forces. We took that also. Africa Rice has, through SADC, uh, made innovation platforms to really work in the hubs. We put also that together. And then from the donor and the government policy angle, how to lobby governments to be able to be interested more to develop their rice value chain. So we also put that to all this together and we call it rice technology delivery infrastructure. And this mimics directly the regional technology delivery infrastructure. So this is the infrastructure that we will be working with and the, uh, as far as I know the clearinghouse of the third project is very happy with this approach we are doing where for in every country it is embedded in the country processes that is critical because that's where success will start and that is what we have done to be able to build it up and bring it to this level so we are in strong partnership with countries and the key driver of that is private sector operators they have to they are central in that as much as producers are central in that so these two uh, constituents or stakeholders groups private sector operators in terms of seed seed enterprises in terms of equipment fa fabricators and suppliers in terms of millers in terms of paddy aggregators and then working and then linking those with the women processors and uh, the, the farmers, those are the bedrock on which this infrastructure revolves around, goes around to make sure they are well supported, they are well um, given good knowledge, good information, good technical support to deliver that.